There are occasions when I get to work at a place that's so amazing and unique that I just want to share it with the whole world. This is one of those times. I was initially called in to rebuild a set of stone steps and see what we could do to save an old spring house. But tucked away in the back corner of the property, something buried in the hillside caught my attention. Oh my God, is this what I think it is? Oh dear God, I think it is. I had stumbled upon an old lime kiln from the early 19th century. To me, old houses and barns and all that are all well and good, but sites associated with early American industry are always my favorite places to find. All right, so down here is where they would remove all the quick lime after the limestone had burned. This is pretty cool. This same kiln just a few decades ago wasn't in bad shape, really. I climbed up and over the kiln. I looked down into the chimney. And I carefully inspected the bottom again. And for a normal person, that would have been enough to satisfy their curiosity. But I'm not normal, and I need to know more. Hardworking men almost 200 years ago put countless hours of their lives here, bringing tons of fuel and limestone to load in the top of this kiln. Who were these men, and where are their descendants today? What about the old lime quarry? Is it still out here in these woods somewhere? I guess we're gonna to have to go see if we can find it. The ground is badly cut up from 100 years of quarrying limestone. I didn't expect to find the actual quarry though. Many old quarries are now filled with trash and covered over or full of water. Climbing a gentle slope. I literally almost fell into it. This abandoned quarry is massive. It's roughly 25 or 30 feet deep, covering maybe an acre of ground, which compared to modern quarries isn't much. But for something from the 19th century, that's huge. The cart road leading into the pit cuts through the hillside, leaving two steep banks on two sides. I followed this long abandoned and unused path right down into the bottom of the quarry. When I got there, I found myself in a place that felt like its own little world. The perfect place for an introvert like me. So who did all this hard labor? Were they slaves, wage earners, children? The census records actually gave us many answers. The quarry was owned and operated by a prominent local family. By 1850, the actual labor was being done mostly by Irish immigrants. I chose one of the dozen or so men that worked here between 1850 and 1880, George Crow, born in Ireland around 1820. He worked in this quarry in 1850, but had moved on to a neighboring state by 1853 and settled into life as a small farmer with his own family. He died young in 1882 and is buried near my own ancestors. Some of his descendants are still in our area today. While I was in the quarry, I actually gathered up some loose stones to see just how good this material is. It actually seems to have a lot of iron in it. I break it up into small pieces, and then I just dump it into a burning hot burn barrel. It 
After it burns for a few hours and then cools, I splash it with water and wait. Pretty quickly, the stone starts to break down into a usable lime material. For the first time in over a century, stone from this quarry has been used to produce cement for construction. If you really want to support historic preservation and restoration, this lime kiln for instance, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. It really does help. In fact, if we're able to monetize this channel and it offsets some of the costs for my clients and myself for doing projects like this, we'll be able to save a lot more history. Thank you for your support.